tire are you sick? Depends on what you mean. I was going to tell you when you called, but you didn't have your results yet. And I thought maybe you'd have it too. And that we'd be in this together. Oliver. I tested positive. Human immunodeficiency virus. Growing up in the early 2000s, this was THE disease that was talked about endlessly in every school health class I endured during puberty. Got chlamydia? That sucks. Herpes? Sad. But HIV? That one was no joke. The mass death of individuals throughout the 80s and early 90s during the height of the AIDS epidemic was our in-class lesson the very day we were given our own abstinence pledges to sign. We were, of course, informed about the advancing medicinal treatments to regulate the disease once acquired, which was promising to a degree, but every lesson on HIV concluded with the same warnings. No vaccine, no cure, and ultimately death. Terrified of the disease, I wondered if this would remain the case. Would HIV be stuck as an infection to be regulated, or could someone, some way, develop a plan to eradicate it? Then, after years in college studying biology and genetics, I've come to now as an adult present my hopes that a definitive immunization and cure for HIV may come about, and not necessarily through more antiretroviral drug treatments, but through human clinical gene editing therapies. Now, before I start talking about splicing people's genes, we should spend a bit of time getting past the superficial fright of HIV as an STD and talk about what HIV really is. How does it work? Why is it so deadly? Why do scientists struggle to develop a successful traditional vaccine for it? And most importantly, how can we actually stop it in its tracks? HIV is a retrovirus, a collection of viral RNA and reverse transcription enzymes packaged in a glycoprotein coat. The glycoproteins in the virus can target and bind a host cell's membrane receptors to inject the contents of its core into the host cell's cytoplasm. Once inside the host, the reverse transcriptase enzymes literally reverse the process of transcription on the viral RNA. Given that transcription is the process of synthesizing RNA from a DNA template, Reverse transcriptase is making its own viral DNA using the RNA as a template. Then that viral DNA is integrated into the host's own DNA, at which point the host's own cellular machinery for reading DNA and synthesizing proteins begins inadvertently synthesizing new copies of the virus. What makes HIV so dangerous is that just like any retrograde virus, it needs a specific host, and the host for HIV is the CD4 T cell a white blood cell uniquely identifiable in the body by its own CD4 glycoproteins on the cell's surface. These white blood cells are an essential part of the body's immune system as it's their job to defend from invading pathogens. But when the viral DNA is detected in these cells, they sacrifice themselves through a process known as pyroptosis. In normal circumstances, this inflammatory cell death triggers other white blood cells to be brought on scene to attack any free foreign invaders from the cell lysate. But because the white blood cells themselves are the target in the case of HIV, the newly synthesized viruses simply invade the arriving CD4s, propagating the disease further like some elegantly evolved trap. It's a trap! HIV continues this process, steadily killing off more and more CD4s until the body is left with less than 200 CD4s per microliter of blood, at which point an infected patient would be classified as having their immune systems compromised and diagnosed with AIDS. <laughs> HIV-positive patients on treatment have been known to be required to take what is known as a drug cocktail, or a collection of multiple drugs rather than any one single drug as a treatment. All the while, HIV-negative individuals at high risk of infection may also opt for preventative antiretroviral drug treatments such as Truvada. This once-daily pill contains HIV reverse transcriptase inhibitors and can be taken alone as pre-exposure prophylaxis or as a cocktail with other drugs containing HIV protease inhibitors in the treatment of HIV. HIV protease is a viral enzyme involved in protein maturation that cleaves precursor polyproteins into smaller individual polypeptide chains that can then fold into their mature final protein shape. 
HIV protease inhibitors are literally molecules with a specific shape designed to bind the active site of the protease enzymes and stop their activity, effectively knocking out the ability for HIV to process its own proteins. If HIV cannot form mature protein, then the virus cannot replicate. And the same goes for drugs that bind the active site of reverse transcriptase, preventing it from creating viral DNA to integrate with the host. While antiretroviral drugs have been extremely vital in preventing the onset of AIDS and the further spread of HIV, it remains at best a lifetime treatment. Individuals have to constantly keep the drugs circulating in their body to maintain the effects, and doing so can get very costly quickly and result in varying degrees of side effects, but it remains the best option as a definitive cure has continued to remain elusive. Then some breakthroughs were made. A tiny portion of individuals of European descent were found to have some innate resistance to HIV infection even while engaging in very high-risk lifestyles. As it turns out, these individuals had all inherited a genetic mutation of a 32 base pair deletion in the gene CCR5 that induces a premature stop codon knocking out gene functionality. The gene itself encodes for a CC motif chemokine co-receptor 5 a type of receptor on the CD4 T cell that detects inflammatory cytokines, but also, as fate would have it, acts as a necessary co-receptor that binds HIV after the virus attaches to the CD4 receptor to draw the virus in for fusion with the host membrane. Therefore, the individuals with the CCR5 Delta 32 deletion mutation were expressing HIV resistance because their CD4 cells were missing this co-receptor HIV needed to grab onto to get inside of the cells. Next, we have a clinical failure. A 27-year-old patient with HIV-1 infection and lymphoma was scheduled to receive a bone marrow transplant. A donor was found who had a homozygous genotype for the CCR5 Delta 32 gene mutation, meaning the patient was set to get a nice set of HIV-immune CD4 cells without the co-receptor, along with his lymphoma treatment. This was projected to be a major news event as a cure for HIV, but he didn't end up cured. His HIV remained intact, and he ultimately ended up dying of complications. This failure was the result of an incorrect prognosis that the patient's HIV infection was exclusively specific to the CCR5 co-receptor. What ultimately ended up being discovered out of this? A slightly different CD4 co-receptor with a CXC motif, CXCR4, can be used by a variant HIV-1 strain, and this patient had dual CCR5 tropic and CXCR4 tropic HIV infection. So, when the white blood cells immune to CCR5 tropic HIV proliferated in the body, they were just then attacked by the undetected CXCR4 tropic HIV infection. Meanwhile, in 2012, while working with Streptococcus pyogenes, the labs of Jennifer Dudna and Emmanuel Charpentier elucidated the molecular mechanisms of strep bacteria's own innate DNA editing system and demonstrated the ability to direct bacterial DNA cutting enzymes called nucleases to delete DNA specifically from segments of their choosing by guiding the proteins with artificially made RNA sequences. This molecular wonder was dubbed the CRISPR-Cas9 system. CRISPR referring to the bacterial DNA, and Cas9 being the CRISPR-associated nuclease protein. Essentially, these women demonstrated a very cheap and simple cut-and-paste feature for genetic engineering that has since been further studied in the context of using cells from microbes, plants, rodents, and humans. And now we jump back to 2017. And flipping through Cell and Bioscience, the official journal of the Society of Chinese Bioscientists in America, we find the published research of Chen Shuliang and his colleagues at Wuhan University developing their own guiding RNA sequences to simultaneously target Cas9 nuclease proteins to knock out the CCR5 gene and the CXCR4 gene for the CD4 chemokine receptors in individuals' very own cells. After culturing wild-type CD4 T-cells from healthy donors and transfecting the cells with the CRISPR therapeutic agents, the modified cell cultures were subjected to both tropic HIV strains for a week and tested for viral load counts. And to quote the researcher's own results, Compared with single modified group or unmodified control, the simultaneous co-receptor edited group shows a significant dual tropic HIV-1 variant protection at different time points, i.e. 
Knocking out both genes in these cells resulted in significantly reduced HIV. Beyond that, because these cells show resistance to HIV infection, they're positively selected for in an HIV patient, meaning that over time, these immune CD4s proliferate and outcompete the dying off susceptible CD4s, lowering the proportion of viable hosts for HIV to infect. Yeah! And then there's this. Apoptosis ratio analysis revealed that CXCR4 and CCR5 disruption did not cause the cells to experience cytotoxicity as compared with unmodified cells which indicated that the disruption was relatively safe for gene therapy in the future. End quote. Safe. Effective. Immunization. Cure. Science is getting very close. Thanks for watching.